Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video with Mr. Terry as I continue my search for historical knowledge found here on the internet. Alright, the way that we are going to continue our search for historical knowledge today is to check out some history memes. Alright, so checking out history memes and the meme videos are a favorite amongst our community and I don't blame you. It's got history, and they're funny, it's a good time. Alright, so how these memes are put together is over on our Discord server, which is linked down below, there's a channel where you can submit memes. And what the mods do is pick um, some of them and they put them into a channel for me to be able to view. Now, I have not seen these before. That's why it's a reaction. So sometimes they're, they're ones that I'm able to talk a lot about. Maybe sometimes I'm not. I mean, honestly, some of them are really specific and about certain things that I really don't know about. And it's kind of interesting because then it leads me to go and look into you know, whatever those topics were. So feel free to comment down below. If I, one of the memes went over my head, you know, feel free to go under um, in the comments below and you can explain it if you uh, know something. And I'd love to hear back from you. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we are into the memes channel that, again, the mods put together here and put the memes that you guys were uh, putting in. And let's see where uh, what we're going to start off with. Okay, so this one is from Lazy Bricks. Cats in Middle age, Ages. Hardworking, went to church, walked on hind legs, contributed to society. <laughs> Cats and how lazy and ungrateful, a ungrateful atheists, too lazy to walk on hind legs. <laughs> I would look out, yeah. So like you got this like Middle Ages artwork, and it's like um, here. Let's make it a little bit bigger here. Yeah, went to, <laughs> with a church walk on hind legs. Okay, so yeah, the, you know, cats were super resourceful, especially the earlier go in history. I mean, they're the ones who kept out mice, and you see them. You know, which was always a big deal. I mean, look at look at like the plague, for example, and you know how um, how like rats were such a big deal with that. But yeah, you got these cats, and then you have them revered in societies like Egypt or something like that. And then yep, there's uh there's uh today's cats. They lay on your keyboard, and then they get in your way. You know, if there was fights between like the Middle Ages cats cats and today's cats, I don't think it'd even be close, would it? <laughs> All right, this is from Alexander the Brazilian Weeb. Oh, man, they got weebs in Brazil now. When you visit the Vatican. When Vatican visits you. <laughs> so, yeah, there's St. Peter's um, right there. Dome and Plaza, by the way, designed by the great Michelangelo. Uh, the uh, St. Peter's basically funded by... Just to put in bigger historical context, by um, indulgences, which is basically the paying down of time you spend in purgatory. Um, interesting there. But yes, so it's like you visit the church, you know, capital of the church, and then the church, you know, visits you. Basically, there you go. You got some crusaders coming in your face. <laughs> yep, sent by Pope Urban II, right? 1096, First Crusade. Send them over, boys. Good stuff. All right, this one says, well, that didn't work. An abbreviated history of communism. <laughs> well, that didn't work. An abbreviated history of communism. That's the big thing people say, right? That, that uh, communist states um, imploded for one reason or another. So there you go. This kind of looks like the cover of what, like, uh, um, you know, you, you see copies of communist manifesto and stuff like that so insert all the angry uh communism has never been practiced right you know those people <laughs> anyway good stuff all right credit rise of lion oh gosh it's me it's me bonapartism after the 1848 revolution so like it's me leaving louise Napoleon, i'm back <laughs> This has basically become a meme now in that one video after I moved. I had been gone, you know, because I moved and I'm in my new my new house studio and everything here. Um, which, by the way, you can tell how much how different the studio is evolving, how, how it looks there. But, yeah, they've been using this now. Um, 
So there was a bunch of basically French revolutions. A lot of people forget that. A lot of people think that, you know, the major one in the 1790s, just like, okay, that ended monarchy. And then there was a republic forever. When no, like Napoleon came in. I mean, it didn't last for that. That didn't really last that long. Comes in, becomes emperor. And then there's another line of Bonaparte's that that come in um, off and on, you know, and, and for uh, for, you know, decades you know, after this. So people often forget that, that the revolution just like led to the end of monarchy in general, which is just not the case. I mean, yeah, things changed as a result of the revolution. There's no doubt, but it wasn't, didn't end monarchy, not long term. All right, what do we got here? Kidnapping the Pope. Whoosh. Philip the Fourth of France, Napoleon. Yes. I like the one. There was one the where they you know they team up there. Um, there was one I think in the last memes video. I forgot what it was, but it was pretty funny with that. Yeah, I mean Napoleon basically just like unseated everybody um, at least for a time period. Everybody ends up recovering basically, but yeah, you get he was he was good diplomat, you know, and working with uh, different people. Right. He was able to to negotiate. He was able to use forceful diplomacy because it's like if you turn down Napoleon, then you're going to end up getting a, um, a piece of the French military, which, of course, is very effective. So, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. What do we got here? This is from no credit here, but posted by Lady Maria. Europe finds out that no one owns Africa. Emergency meeting. <laughs> Among us, topical video game humor. So this is this actually works really well because um, age of imperialism, right? You got Europe who has and uh, is industrializing, and a big part of the industrial component was land and resource extraction, labor, that kind of stuff. And um, Africa was one of those places, of course, nearby Europe that they felt was kind of ripe for the taking with resources and uh, proximity and what they thought was not a lot of strength that could defend themselves. So this meeting, by the way, um, would be the Berlin Conference in the 1880s. And what ends up happening here is, oh, well, up to this point, Europeans had gone into different parts of Africa and were all trying to colonize it, taking, cl uh, you know, making claims for all this stuff. And, um, it ends up being kind of a, an issue where, you know, the Europeans are having a hard time trying to justify with each other, like whose claims, who, who, who claim or whose claims like are valid, right? Like who, who gets what? And the Berlin conference is one of those places where you started getting those um, conversations and trying to establish rules, you know, for, okay, you get this and this. And if you're the first one to do this and all this stuff, and one of the famous things about the Berlin Conference is there were no African nations present at this meeting, which was basically deciding their own fate. Um, so you could see the whole imperialism, a process of imperialism, really did not take into account the wishes of the local people, who, of course, will be exploited for a long time and had already been exploited for a long time in Africa. All right, nice among us. Oh, no, me again. Credit Jaden. Romans leaving Britain circa 410. <laughs> and then they don't come back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is actually interesting. I was watching last night. The thing I like to do when I'm playing my video games on my own is I put on historical documentaries as well and kind of listen and play or listen while I play. And I was watching one on um, the Roman years of Britain. And it was, it was really informative there. And understanding they, you know, they'd been there for basically 500 years, but yeah, then eventually, basically, they they end up pulling out. I mean, it coincides not long with the official fall of the Western Roman or Western Roman Empire, which was officially in 476. But yeah, it was actually um, I learned a lot about it. I learned about how a lot like it was it was far more brutal than I think I, I gave it credit for as well. But then learning about all the resistance movements that happened, learning more about like Queen Boudicca and stuff like that, which are interesting um, things to have. But yeah, the Romans, they leave. They just, they just, we're out, 410, we're done. <laughs> all right. All right, this one's 
We've got a bunch of frames, so let's, uh, I'll try to zoom this one a little more for you guys, and we'll scroll down. Okay. Excuse me. All right, you have freed us. 20, I wouldn't say freed, more like under new management. 1939, you freed us. So this is, okay. So basically, yeah, like, the, okay, well, let's, let's finish, we'll come back. You have freed us. I wouldn't say freed, more like under new management. And then 41, you have freed us. I would say freed, more like under new management. This is in 41. You freed us. I wouldn't say freed, more like under new management. So Eastern Europe here has and has has changed so much. Basically since, especially um, in the years... I mean, you got to go back way further in 1920, but um, especially with like the, like World War One, I, I mean, you get like the creation of Poland here, for example, um, which which ends up happening. Basically, they parts of Russia and parts of Germany lost that control. Of today would now be um, Poland after World War One, and then similar thing happens, you know, in World War Two, where you have like the Soviet Union and the German and Germany both invade Poland and basically split it up back to what it kind of used to look like before World War One, right, which is happening here um, in these time periods. So you get, yeah, in, into like the World War II territory. And then, uh, then you get with like the Soviet Union taking over pretty much that stuff once again. Uh, they're basically staying in those areas that they occupied in World War II um, and it being a lot of them puppet states for the Soviet Union there. So, yeah, poor, poor, uh, you know, um, this whole region here, especially like Poland, who's constantly been in this tug of war between Germany and Russia for such a long time. Okay, let's get this one. Bank. All right, so oh, let me see if you guys can see. Uh, behind my face here, it says the West, by the way, it's the West. All right, so we're in a class. We got Pan-Arabism, Gamal Abdel Nasser, and the West is like looking at that. So Pan-Arabism is an interesting topic. It's what I wrote my thesis on at college. And specifically, it was it was the, the, the response to um, Pan-Arabism. But nevertheless, it in, in relationship to, it was specifically Pan-Arabism's response to, um, my paper was Pan-Arabism's Pan response to the Balfour Declaration, which is one of the things that paved the way for the creation of a Jewish state in the Middle East. And this idea of Pan-Arabism was, you know, uniting all the different Arab communities uh, together to be able to basically fight off, fight this off. And it failed. It failed um, in the days of the Balfour Declaration around world between World War One and World War Two, and then you got uh, Nasser, who comes into power into Egypt and unified the Arab world more than about anyone ever had. And however, it still failed, um, especially when with like with with uh, um, trying to get rid of this this Western influence in the Middle East, and you know we're trying to reject Israel and stuff like that, and. It also failed because of the backing, you know, large, largely because of the backing of other powerful states with Israel. But yeah, it's like Nasser was able to do this. I guess it would be kind of like um, holding up fire. Nasser's kind of seen as, you know, the, the the person that modernized Egypt and was kind of known for kind of playing the Cold War to the advantage of Egypt and basically playing like the Soviet Union, the United States and their interests against each other. And is kind of seen as, again, a... Um, Kind of almost like a founder of modern Egypt in a way. Very famous. Cool, cool, cool. Good stuff. All right. What do we got here? We got some Uno going on. Leave Africa alone or draw 25. Europeans, draw 20. <laughs> so he's got like all these cards. It's like, yep, you got to choose. Leave Africa alone or draw 25. Europe would rather draw 25. And you can almost see it like... To draw 25 countries almost so yeah this kind of in a way kind of goes back to the whole among us one with the um with the the berlin conference where it's like nah we'll just like keep doing this and keep playing so there we go 
Poor dude. He might he might not be very good at Uno. <laughs> All right. Greeks. Oh, sorry. I haven't been reading the uh, the credits. So we had Jaden. Uh, the one, the Poland one was uh, Alex Anubis did the, um, he is Egyptian. That's great. Anubis did the one about Nasser. Uh, Chalky Milk did that one. And then this one's Baldor. Greeks invent trigonometry and prove the earth is round. Also the Greeks. That's clearly a bear. <laughs> yeah. It's like any, uh, any else, anyone else? Like, yeah, you look at, um, you look at like, uh, constellations and you're like that doesn't look anything like that at least with like the big dipper it's like yeah it does look like a it does look like like a spoon or something but nope it's like no this this is actually yeah like a bear or a guy or something like that um and so i guess it's that duality of the greeks these amazingly advanced things but then had to really use their um uh, their uh um imagination for stuff like that all right con fox i'm sure he's gonna have some obscure one let's see what we got here gosh click already okay so we got some uh despicable me going on emerald francois to yen arriving in Cadiz harbor in october 1805 in terms of ships we have no ships <laughs> you know um you go back to like Napoleonic times. It's like, you know, the Napoleon and 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 just the French. Just to look at a larger context, were you know far more interested in the land power, right? It's why you also see like Napoleon not invest as much in overseas colonies and try to make you know quicker money and stuff like that to focus on uh, European encounters. You know what I mean and. That would have been, yeah, something. So, I mean, it was it was smart to kind of stay away from those things anyways. Okay, credit. China is broke again. <laughs> it fell again. Soviet Union in 1991. Oh, no. And then it broke up. Anyway, 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 anyway. Yeah, so Soviet Union, of course, breaks up in the 80s and then officially is done in the early 90s. And all those nations are going to now become independent and free from the kind of grasp of the Soviet Union. And, of course, there were a lot of them, too many to go over, but very good. All right, what do we got here? Okay, the German economy, Treaty of Versailles. So he shoots it. Why does Germany hate us? <laughs> So yeah, the Treaty of Versailles, as many of you know, was the treaty that ends World War One, and as part of it, the reparations were in the tens of billions of dollars. What today would you know? Uh, yeah, but tens of billions of dollars, crippling the German economy, um, and that was used, you know, by like the Nazi Party, Adolf Hitler, as basically an organizing tool to try to unify and fight back against the Treaty of Versailles. And so like in this, it's like the, the French are like, why do they hate us? But it's like, no, like France, you killed Germany. But then, you know, Germany or, you know, France would have been like, well, I mean, they Germany invaded us. So therefore they should have to pay for the damages incurred by the war. So it's like, you know, lose-lose situation. But essentially that's kind of what happened with Germany's response eventually was the Treaty of Versailles must be destroyed, right, for Germany to progress. And it was a pretty good rallying tool. And Adolf Hitler, he basically got into politics specifically to dismantle the Treaty of Versailles. Okay, this is from Pug. USSR military, you got Cristiano Ronaldo and USSR economy. It's like a messed up version of him. So that's Cristiano Ronaldo. He's probably the most famous uh, um, um, soccer player. It's probably him and Leo Messi these days. And he's known for being, you know, this handsome dude and stuff like that. And here the military is like strong, well-dressed, looks great. But then the economy is like <laughs> a, a horrible, like... Uh, a, 
it doesn't it doesn't look anything like the the military. It's like they put the military up front, and the military functions and looks a lot better than the economy. So this is like a statue. Where's the statue at of him? It's it's pretty uh it's pretty crappy. No offense. I mean, good thought there for Ronaldo, but there you go. That does make a pretty good point, though, because they put so much work into their military when the economy often suffered in the history of the USSR. Credit, Jaden. All right, what do we got? Battle of Trebia. September 18, 218 BC. Battle of Trebia was the first major battle of the Second Punic War. Fought between the Carthaginian uh, forces of Hannibal and a Roman army under uh, Mulligius. 22 or 23rd of December. Okay, so we got Punic Wars. Battle of Lake... And it's hard to... The, you can't really see the... Um, even on my screen, you can't see the uh, the text on here. But anyway, there's more of the uh, um, Punic Wars here. Back uh, Trasimene. And then Battle of Cannae. So, yeah, that was... Um, these are, yeah, the major battles for the... Uh, the Punic Wars, and they did. They got bigger, and they got you know even more violent there. Um, but the Punic Wars are the war between Carthage and um, Rome, who were the two basically powers of the Mediterranean and were competing for colonies. Um, what ends up happening at the end there, after some you know incredible destruction at the end by the Romans, um, this it, it is a Roman victory, and the uh, Carthaginian Empire is. Utterly destroyed. <laughs> okay. All right, we got some family feud. When you laugh at France for surrendering, but realize they once conquered Vietnam, <laughs> the U.S. <laughs> so France, yeah, France had taken over Vietnam in the whole age of imperialism, and then after World War uh, Two, when Places like Vietnam actually go back to go back to really you want to go back to uh, end of World War One, which the Allies kind of put out this policy where they were going to give self determination, uh, which is like the ability to cre create your own nations out of these colonies that the Central Powers had, and a lot of uh, nations like Vietnam thought it, thought it very hypocritical that the Allies were doing this with colonies that were. The central powers who had lost, so like uh, Ottoman Empire, um, Germany, Austria, Hungary, having their colonies taken away and then thus given independence, but the Allies didn't do that with their colonies. They thought it was very hypocritical. So it didn't have to work. Didn't happen after World War One, and then it didn't happen after World War Two, and that's when you saw Vietnam start to take things in their own hands when they started revolting against uh, the French, and the French eventually they end up pulling out in the fifties, um, and then. Then you see the Americans, you know, coming as well. So there you go. It's like they're making fun of the the French for surrendering, but then the United States also failed in Vietnam. <laughs> it's pretty good. Okay. Is that is that Scarjo? Eighteen hundreds Europe after realizing that Africa is full of resources and hasn't heard of Jesus. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's kind of like African colonialism here. Um, day is like our third meme, but yep, it's like, hey, it's like it's 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 a very attractive region. It's got a ton of resources to help our industrialization, and they're not Christians. At least some of them were. A lot of them were Muslim or indigenous religions, or uh, there were Christians in places like Ethiopia, of course. But there you go. All right, we'll do a couple more here. And I think I've got plenty here because I'm only like halfway through this uh, for another future video. All right, what's going on here? Listen, kid, I don't have much time. The Bronze Age collapse happened because... <laughs> I like this. So you got this like chocolate gorilla. Okay, so the Bronze Age collapse happens around 1000 BC. And it led to... Basically, the destruction and massive changes all across the Eastern Mediterranean world and around Mesopotamia. Um, and there's a big mystery that nobody really knows who this invading force is. The Egyptians referred to them as the Sea Peoples, but like, who were they? You know what I mean? We don't know exactly, but they came and really messed things up. Um, it 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 
toppled certain groups like the Mycenae Falls, um, different groups in, uh, there's, there's a lot of them in uh, more of the Middle East region. They fall. Things like like literacy ended up dying out in a lot of ways. We had like uh, 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 cuneiform ends up like getting yeeted and all this stuff. It's a pretty crazy time, and it's one of the big mysteries. So apparently, this uh, chocolate gorilla is the one that had the insider information. So oh seven for you, my chocolate friend. Oh seven for you. All right, then, you guys, we're going to go ahead and end it here. There's plenty of memes for me to get to. If you would like to add a meme uh, to potentially get considered for getting on a future meme video, be sure to join our Discord server, and you'll find a channel for memes. And you can put them in there. And the good ones, uh, hopefully, then will be kind of filtered through and uh, put in by our mods into the channel that I can view. Just ask that you keep them mostly school appropriate and stuff like that. And it's fun to have them specific. If they're like crazy specific, you know, and really just kind of like appeal to you, they may not be as fun for the whole community. So the more widely accessible they are, usually the better I'll say that they are. But feel free to, you know, put whatever in there and it'll get considered. All right. And with that, you guys, uh, we'll go ahead and end it here. Have a good day. Bye.